and here we are today. I just want to, amen? Amen. amen. So thank you to my team. My team members, stand up, Rochelle, Chimwa, we have Dalton, um, Chris, Mr. Chris. Do I miss anybody living here? I was going to come to my Mr. Nicole, Dion. Um, also, I just want for them the adjustments, the last minute changes, making sure this is successful, and just doing the best that they can do to serve the community. And you are only as good as your team, so give it up to my team. And I also want to thank my colleagues in government that um, supported today. We have from um, the Borough President Office, King Council, I know the Deputy Director is here from Borough Paul. Also, she's always a great representative, but he cannot be here. Public advocate Jamani Williams. We got a Congresswoman Yvette Clark. We have our city councilman Crystal Hudson, um, Assembly Member Barbara Safan, Assembly Member uh, Brian Cunningham. And I, I think we got everybody. Everybody that wanted to be here probably couldn't be here, but it's a, it's important that we make this a collaborative effort when we're doing events like this, because it affects all of us. And also want to thank the New York State Office of Mental Health Commissioner who's here, Ms. Sullivan, let's give it up. And also the chair of the New York Daniels Law Task Force, so thank you so much. So in lieu, er, yes, yes, let's give it up for that. In lieu of having our monthly Assembly District 58 Vital Voice Community Meeting, this will be the this will be the event that we will always replace that with um, as long as we just continue, continue to move on to make sure that we make the changes. So we normally have, um, we just explain what do I do as an elected official, what, what legislation we have done, what's the updates, because we have to update you on what we're doing when we're in office, right? The next one, you want to make sure they do what they're supposed to do or what you would have them to do with your support. So today, we have Daniel's Day to celebrate Daniel Cruz birthday by raising awareness on mental health, resources, and legislation. Daniel was unfortunately killed at the hands of police while having a mental health crisis in 2020. This is a state coalition that is happening simultaneously in Rochester and Buffalo. And of course, once I got elected, I was tasked and appointed and anointed by Christina Sparrow to do this in Brooklyn. So we, why are we here at this location? I just want to say, I want to give a shout out to Montgomery Street Block Association, all the residents. Thank you to DJ John from Montgomery. Thank you, thank you for all. We try to be have all the stakeholders included in this effort. So, we had it here today is unfortunately, this was the best location on an unfortunate situation where uh, Montgomery and Utica, where our very own Saheed Vassell was killed by, by police. Well, I have it, and Dad is here. Eric, I saw, can you stand, please, Dad? <laughs> well, I'm having a mental health crisis in 2018. I remember that day, I'm sure many of you do, especially that, like it was yesterday, being on the streets for over 300 people that was in trauma and in pain and were nothing more than for the police to feel the pain they felt. And I remember at that time it was a Sunday woman, um, Diana Richardson, and we put our bodies in between the community and the police. And I remember telling them, you, if you didn't do it, your people did it. And right now you represent them. So you can't say nothing to our people. They need to scream, they need to let it out, and you're going to allow them to do that. And I'm going to stand right here to make sure they're safe. And that day, I knew we had so much more to do, and we was going to make sure. So when I campaigned, I came over, this is the tail end of my district. Um, the former assembly member, um, Nick Perry, we here for 30 years, now the U.S. Ambassador to Jamaica, he went on to another appointment that was called in Jamaica, and I opened up a seat. So when I was campaigning, I came over here, and it really hit me what happened in this area, and everyone spoke about this. I hate that. So, I said, when we have this opportunity to do this event, we are doing it right here. Because we're never going to forget him. And there's so much more like him not community, unfortunately. So I promise to do all I can to advocate for resources and legislation. So as an advocate elected official, once I took office, I created the Assembly District 58 Mental Health. 
Fiscal Task Force. Okay, led by Christina Sparrow, who is here, our chair of the stand. I met Christina years ago when we was advocating for a different number for 911. We was coming with all type of numbers, right? Back then, I would public advocate your mind boys when you first got in. Can my task force numbers come? Go Wayne, you always try to slip through. So Go Wayne, better be come right here. Task force numbers, come up here as we talk. Make sure you come up here. And actually, um, I'll show you, give them all a poster in the, in the meantime, because when I think it's important as we say this message, not only we stand with the task force members working hard and diligently on here, that we um, make sure we acknowledge those who we have lost. Um, and our task force member is those who live the experience. We cannot do anything about mental health or talk anything about mental health when you don't have care advocates and them at the table, people from your community making sure they're represented. So we have East Rockwood Village Inc. and anti violence organization doing mental health. We also have God Squad. We also have DRUM, Development Righteous United Movement. We also have Kavi and CCRB you have to stand with us too. So the complaint review board has been out and she always right here at CCRB. And along with community members, like we talk about with different experience, basic to have solution driven conversations on identifying resources and normalizing the conversation about mental health. We don't need a criminal response to a mental health crisis. We need a public health approach that includes compassion, informed intervention, trauma informed care, professionalism, peer advocates, you know I gotta say that, what it was, and empathy. Yes, our police officers were not tra was trained to fight crime, not treat mental health conditions. We must stop forcing our officers to respond, to be first responders, I'm trying to read it, people keep on calling, first responders to mental health crisis. It's not fair to them or the people in crisis. And we have a new number, a crisis hotline number, 988. And as you do with anything new, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be lumps. But we're going to work it together because we fought hard for this three-digit number, 988. Thank you to everyone in here that contributed to this cause. So naturally, I supported my state colleagues by joining the campaign to pass Daniel's Law and raise awareness about the law by hosting the first statewide Daniel's Day in um, 2022 in Brooklyn, New York. It is also being hosted, like we talked about, in the various um, locations, Rochester, Buffalo, and leading, leading in Rochester is Assembly Member Bronson, my colleague, Senator Group, Council Member Stanley Martin, and several other advocates that you will hear from today as well. So we have the Daniel's Group Coalition, we have a uh, New York lawyer for the public interest, and my LPI, lawyers of all lawyers, CCIT, uh, which is correct crisis intervention today, NYC. Uh, we have Free the People, Local NY, NAMI, New York Association of Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services. Right? This event brings awareness to mental health, support, and resources for the community, explains policies we need a place to address our mental health a means while memorializing individuals that were directly impacted by being killed at the hands of police in the community. Like we mentioned before, Sahid Rassam. And then, my first encounter or experience responding to an incident involving someone having a mental health crisis and was killed at the hands of police was in Flatbush Gardens. And that was the way in June. And then unfortunately, Sahid came after. And then we had Judas Pierre, his family is here. You can stand, so everybody can see you as well. Family members is here, who also, not far from here, Eastern Park, who was also killed at the hands of police. And there's so many names that, you know, that we could keep on going on and on and on, but we want to shorten that list and have no more any of our people on that list. We memorialize Dorothy Clark, who would be alive today if resources and support were readily available to support the individuals who ended her life. So can you stand to the sisters in the room? We love you and we are forever family. Unfortunately, the situation brought us together, but we are here today. And we pay special tribute to our Assembly District 58 Mental Health Task 
cast member, Tanya Sharice Owens, who passed away while doing what she loved, helping people find healthy ways to cope with trauma. And let's find a little bit more. Last year, we did this event. I met this beautiful woman in Jim St. Norman houses. Where's Pam? Pam is here? Pam right there, right? And she was drilling me. You know, those women, I see them like the fish. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? And I said, what you doing, Daniel? This is what I'm doing. I'm explaining to her. So did I pass the test? Did you pass the test? I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna help you. She took this on with such a passion. And unfortunately, as she finished, right, her libations, speaks to ancestors on the day last year, she passed shortly after that right on Montgomery and Nina. And it's almost like she crafted her own transition. When we say Reverend Shannon, right out of this world. The music played, the pastors on hand, we prayed as the ambulance left, all her people was there. And when I went back to her family, her friends, they said, tell me one thing. Did she do her presentation? And I said, yes, she did. They said, that's all time we talked about since she started this event. So it became a, a space of healing for many. And I think at this moment it's appropriate to do a moment of silence for those impacted. And as I said before, my job is to make sure I don't think job. And one thing I just missed, Sacred Sisters Circle. Tanya's family, which is all of us, can you please stand so we can acknowledge you as well? I went off to the whole story, right? And I didn't get a chance. And they had, they were tasked with all of us to make sure that as we were trying to heal the community and that trauma happened, that we had to re-heal, trying to heal the community right back after that. So thank y'all so much for all that you do and continue doing. So like I said, um, as I said earlier, just making sure that we do updates. I just want to, this is I guess a perfect example and can we probably um, can share the sentence with me where we have legislation that was created, right, in Albany. And who knows what happens in all of It's not we not connected back to the community members. But our community live this trauma and they want changes. So now we have Daniel's Law, which creates a task force, right, of appointments of members to talk about what this is going to look like before. We still have more work to do because we still have to pass Daniel's Law in its full entirety, but it's a start. So that was, I would say, the first phase has been done. That's one of the successes of creating this task force. And I know there's a coalition of Danny's Law, but I thought it was important that in 7th District 58, that our constituents and community members was attached to the law and legislation and understand it the way the coalition understands it. Because we're not, we, we were an advocate, some of us, well, we say Pam, <laughs> Pamela Stevens, and Christina, when I went to Albany in January, they went to Albany in January, and they were there every week advocating. So we were able to get community members who never advocated before, never went to Albany, to go to Albany to make those changes and advocate for what's right. And we also have a member appointed to this task force. And I know it's like we was talking about, it's like, okay, Rochester did an appointment, of course, because unfortunately that's where Daniel Poo was killed, and that's my right. We understood that, but I said, I'm going to speak to my friends at, you know, New York State Office of Mental Health, because we need to make sure we have a voice. And thank y'all so much, because y'all chose very wisely by having Christina Stark represent on this task force today. To make sure our voices in this community is amplified. We also want to thank New York State Office of Mental Health. When I first got in office, Christina was like, we got to do this, we got to meet with this person. We met with the New York State Office of Mental Health. And I will say, y'all took the charge. And y'all said, this task force that y'all talking about, we want to support funding-wise and just wrap up our services. And y'all had monthly meetings to figure out a mobile mental health response unit. What would that look like in 
how about community? So not just doing what you want to do, like people say, yo, everybody's doing what they want to do, but no, speaking to the community members and saying, what do we need, right? And have that. So thank y'all so much for that. We also um, did a 98 campaign, even at this church, we went to faith-based institutions and we talked about this from the pulpit when it came to 98. We went to small businesses, our merchants, and we were able to post up posters in their stores. So this way, because if you know the story about Sahin, myself, and mostly a lot of community members, those stakeholders on the street, that store right there and the barber shop, they're the ones who's the first responders. And if they knew about, if 98 existed, they knew the resources, that would have been a number to call instead of 911 when they led to his fatality. So having meetings to discuss the priorities of a semi the same discipline when it comes to mental support registration, like treatment, not jails. I know y'all will talk more about that. We also met with agencies, as I discussed, and had road trips. So we visited respite centers, clubhouses, testified at City Hall regarding the roadmap to mental health and make sure we iterate what we want to see, what we like, and what we think it should look like. And of course, happening today, the second annual Daniel's Day to September. Celebrate Daniel Hu and all like him while connecting the community to what we as leadership is doing for all people and bringing resources to the community. People always say, do better as a community, but we need to make sure we give our community members the tools to know how to advocate and to know what's out there that we need to do. So I will, I'm going to close shortly. But I will have to say, through this process, we met some amazing people, most of you in this room, individuals that live experience and on the front lines. I'm going to say this again. Peer advocates, but that's a peer advocate, someone with experience, someone who has a mental condition that is at the table to lead the conversation. You cannot talk about someone or talk about what they're going through if they're not part of the solution of how to get to what we need. So mental health is not a crime. It's not mental health, it's not a crime. We gotta put that up there. Sure. And this, we need to destigmatize and decriminalize it. So in our family, I would say there was one or two situations, good or bad, away from a mental health crisis. You never know when you're gonna be the one or a family member will be the one that is in this situation. So we just want to make sure that you realize it's not an I team. It's because it's a we team. It's all of us. So I want to make sure we have postcards that's going around with the scan and give you an update about Daniel's floor when they have a meetings. Um, we are, we'll, I will let the commissioner do some of her talking points when it comes to what that is. But I just want to say thank y'all so much for taking the time to come out today. And if I forgot anybody, please charge it to my mind and not my heart like my pastor, Dr. Barbara, for the for the last time I go. So I just want to say thank you, love you all. And with that being said, I will just hand the mic back over to our host. Do you want them to stay up here? Y'all ready for the stand? <laughs> all right, so we will stand with you. Thank you so much, Assembly Member. At this time, I'm going to call up, uh, she's representing the Daniels Law Task Force Coalition, as well as our Assembly District 50 Mental Health Task Force Chair and Advocate, Christina Starr. Woo!
PTSD is a very anxiety, but you know what? I get help. I go for my treatment. And I know what wellness looks like for me and recovery looks like for me as well. But that's why I have it. Chair of the Civil District, the District 58, uh, Civil Member of the Monique Channel Water Control Task Force. I'm also on the Daniels Board Task Force on a member as well, which was elected by Commissioner Ann Sullivan. Thank you very much. Um, also, like, to, the points that I really want to get away today is that I want us to learn about Daniels Day, right? And I also want to learn about the safer response to mental health emergencies where peers, you hear me, peers with lived experience. Serve as first responders to keep the police out of the equation. And the last thing I want to say about, which is probably most important to me, <coughs> is about self care. So if you look around this room, every single organization, I did it intentionally as I planned this, because we need to start talking about emotional wellness, particularly in BIPOC communities. We we criminalize the word, we stigmatize the word, we're like, oh, get over it, stand by it. No, 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 no. Uncle is having an issue, he needs to talk about it. Drinking too much or whatever. No, uncle needs help. We may not we go to church and talk about it and pray on it, yes, but we also need additional help. And it may not be the traditional help like medication. We may want to have the bristle of a massage lady in here. She was giving our free massages, right? We want to make do some chest to chest with some therapy. We may make plant therapy, dance therapy, sound therapy, baby, chakra. Every single resource in here is here to provide you wellness. So we need to change the narrative about mental illness too emotional wellness, right? And when you start to meet people in your community who need help, reach out to your neighbors and say, hey, Pam, what's going on today? I'm here to support you. And that's what we start doing as a community. And stop calling the police on each other and talk about it. We need to talk about our issues amongst each other. Um, what else? So I'm going to talk about an incident that I had which drives home to me, why this is so, so important to me. So, Having the police, non police respond is important too because about two years during COVID, I had a baby knocking on my door. And I live in a co op building. I'm a peer. And the police of my neighborhood know I'm a community organizing advocate. And of course, I've been to the hospital a few times, no shame about that. And so they came to my house, they know my history. I didn't know it was the police, all I heard was banging at my door. So on the news you hear today, there's crime, shootings, everything on the news during COVID. So what I did, I didn't know who was at my door, I grabbed the knife. I'm from Brooklyn, do or die, because I'm taking out with me. Some people have that free flight of fight response, I'm the fight response, right? And so I heard the baby at my door, I was in the kitchen with the largest knife I could find, and my door was unlocked, luckily because if the police opened my door, they would have shot me and said, EDP, emotionally disturbed person. Mind you, I don't like that derogatory language, I'm not EDP, I'm a person. And if I happen to be in crisis, I'm a person experiencing a crisis, okay, the PEC. But that day I wasn't even experiencing a crisis, right? So he come banging on my door. And so after they leave, I call the doorman. He says, oh, that was, that was the police on the shed. Thank God my door was locked. Because you know what, Travick, what is his name? Travick? Kowalski. He got shot when the police came to his door. Miguel Richards was standing silent with his shades on in the dark room, not moving. Was it free swipe or fight? And they shot him and tased him. I'm not going to be a victim. And this is why I'm advocating for Dan as well. This is why I'm advocating for peers and police partners. This is why I'm advocating for police to not be involved in uh, mental health calls. So I ask you today is that when your neighbors are reaching out for help, please get to know them before they escalate. We all know when we're escalating, right? We know when our uncle's going to escalate, we know he's going to go to drink. Try to connect to that uncle and your neighbor right before then because we need to support the level of these resources that we have out here. Thank you. At this time, we're going to welcome Alima Awase from Free the People, Rochester. So please welcome Alima and Justin. Thank
but then our trajectory after that protest looked a little bit differently than the rest of the countries. As we were protesting that summer in August, um, protesting from May through August, we got a call from someone named Joe Prude. And Joe Prude is the brother of Daniel Prude. And he was in distress and he said, the city's not listening to me. My brother was murdered all the way back in March. They're not releasing the, the body cam footage. They're not giving me any information. They haven't even actually announced his death in the proper way that they're supposed to. So immediately we sprung to action. Immediately we started calling on the, um, on the city council, on the mayor, and trying to demand some answers. We need information on how he died, on the body cam footage, and we need to know what happened. A few days later, the body cam footage was revealed, and when I tell you, it completely shattered our community in Rochester, it completely shattered us. In the body cam footage, you will see Daniel Prude completely nude, clothless, in March of 2020. There was snow on the ground. Joe Prude had called the police and said, because at that time, 911 was the only option, which is why this is a problem. And he said, Daniel Prude, my brother, is in distress and we need help. He's having a mental health crisis and he verbalized this to the police. They come, they find him clothless, and what they do is they pin him to the ground and after they have already subdued him, they place him in a split, spit hood. The spit hood has been denounced by several organizations across the country and worldwide. When someone is in panic and having an episode, it only makes matters worse. Within five minutes after the spit hood was placed on Daniel Prude's head, he went limp. He went unconscious. They took him to the hospital, and within a couple of days after being in the coma, he passed away. RPD, the Rochester Police Department, murdered Daniel Prude in a situation that didn't even need them to be there. In a situation where they shouldn't have been there. In a situation where Daniel Prude should have been shown compassion and should have been extended a hand and should have been extended a blanket and should have been shown that there is a way to calm someone down without the excessive violence. That incident really shattered our community and since then we've been advocating and organizing as you've heard a lot about Daniel's Law already. Um, but there are a lot of other things that our community is really trying to organize for. Um, um, the coalition, yeah, the coalition is really big. The Daniel's Law Coalition is uh, working to get this task force up and going, uh, along with the assembly member and a lot of the other uh, uh, persons you have mentioned. There was another incident I wanted to share with you, uh, just to show you what it might look like to have peers present. One of our comrades in that, uh, a few months later, had was, ex was experiencing a mental health crisis of their own. And police were called on him by his neighbor, and we immediately had heard and we showed up to the scene. And while the police are screaming at our comrade, our friend, who we know, who was protesting with us through 2020, um, the, there was a lot of tension. We could see it was going to get really bad. We could see hands reaching for the tasers and hands reaching for the weapons and hands trying to escalate the situation. So we asked for uh, the police to give us a few minutes to try and talk him down. And when I tell you it took 10 minutes of friendly faces, literally just pleading with our friend and asking him to calm down, asking him come down from the ledge he was standing on and asking him to come with us inside to someplace warm, he was down and he was safe in 10 minutes. We didn't need police there. We didn't need them. So there is another model, there's another method, and it's being shown across the nation. The statistics are there. The police are escalating the situation. They are causing deaths that are unjustified. And the police officers aren't, seen, aren't being shown justice. None of the police officers, all seven that were involved in the Daniel Poop murder, saw a single day in jail, saw a single, like, any type of repercussion. They all got away scot-free. And you know who saw um, the inside of, of, of cells and the inside of courtrooms? The protesters. Me and my friends, the people of the community, we're the ones still trying to deal with the law right now, not the police officers who murdered a community member. So there's another model, and we just encourage you to continue advocating. We stand with y'all in Brooklyn, and we're so glad that y'all are standing with us. And thank you so much for having me, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Amanda. All the way from Rochester, you see the red so shout out to her. At this time, as you said, we're remembering a lot of people that have fallen uh, to the harm to the police. So at this time, we're going to welcome the father of Saeed Basel. Please welcome Mr. Eric Basel. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. It's really on the side, uh, on the inside. It's a wonderful privilege for me to be here to celebrate with these wonderful people. And again, this wonderful woman, Simone. My name is Eric Bass. I am the father of Sadi Bass, who was murdered by the NYPD. Sai has a major problem. He has a major fight on his hand and they call and say that we have no money. Immediately when the police came on the scene, they did not notice. They called me and he turns around and shot my son nine times. It really creates distress on my family. Also in the community. We're still going to pay. Those poor police who killed my son never see a minute in jail. As the lady says before, who entered in the jail were protested. I am happy to be here. I pray that, you know, as the world goes on, Labor Day. It was 
how many minutes he moment uh, seeing his name on the cross street during the parade. Uh, they would, you cannot say that you will make it to the state of parade without being there from Sunday night until Monday evening. And just spread the joy and enjoy his culture. Um, but that's just step one. Um, every day we're seeing injustice happen to people who don't deserve to have it happen to them. There are people who need help not to be gunned down or pinned to the ground, have their lives taken away. Um, you almost have to wonder why is it that we're the one who loses something? They lose their lives, we lose a family member. But these officers who commit these crimes are losing them. Some of them don't even lose their jobs. Police are meant to protect and serve, not play judge, jury, and execution. Um, these aren't words I wish I had to articulate, but they have to be said. Sometimes life isn't fair, but when life is when life is at its most unfair, that's when we must push forward and be better. Not only for ourselves, but the ones we love, the ones we can still hold. Always remember Bird, Daniel, and the dozens of lives, hundreds of lives that have been lost when they shouldn't have been. I call on legislators to pass Daniel's laws to save lives and protect the most vulnerable members of our community. This time, we're going to have uh, the sister, uh, Dorothy Cox, who is here at this time. So please welcome Ms. Rosemary Cox at this time.
saying that it was as if she orchestrated. She did orchestrate. And she uh, called many of the people that she knew. And even as she went out to speak, she was orchestrating and she was giving the instructions and you do this and you do that and go back and get the plan and, you know, loving of course, when she was directing the entire
So I can sign over to Paul Elevation um, and Libation is four and given to the ancestors and to the divine, the divine spirit, whichever it may be. It's not stable to give um, any specific religion. It's not it's not that source, it's your source, whichever you choose to so like your source of inspiration and divine equipment on a daily basis, which guides you. So we have to be one of the locations in the land and I want to run to. So we like to pour the libation onto earth. Um, we don't have um, books that are around feet right now, but you could just pour it um, on your heart, so in the form of living earth on a plant. So we like to pour the libation first to the divine source, just for giving us the life of being here today and walking with us and guiding us in the Thank you. 
better health. We're going to do a workshop on hydrotherapy, uh, the benefits of herbal teas, the benefits of water. Our sister is going to show us how to use sea moss, the benefits of juicing, sound therapy, crystal healing, aromatherapy, working with the breath, oils, and crystals for our everyday healing. And once again, I thank you for having us. Thank you. 
for over 15,000 
are a friend. Um, it's, it's hard to be in this room right now. This is a very, a very heavy spirit. But I'm thankful for you telling and retelling your stories. Because it's both by the grace of God that I am not standing here with the picture. I'm a mom. I have two children. I have a 23-year-old son. And, and, and time and time again, uh, we have challenges with him. Um, and so I thank God for each and every one of you for the sacrifices that you make, for the services that you provide, for the advocacy uh, for you coming together. But we have to continue to work to make sure that we are destroying the stigma that is associated with mental health. Um, I remember, I remember, we, we, we're talking about these young people, but how many of you are old enough to remember Eleanor Bumpers? I was a very young child when I remember how the police treated her. And so this has been a long, 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 hard fight and struggle. So thank you for all that you do. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Bar President, the Honorable Antonio Reynos. I'm sorry, the 2.6 million residents of Brooklyn didn't do what I'm supposed to be doing. I kind of flipped here. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like the solution is in this room. So once again, thank you for everything that you are doing. Let's continue to work to make sure that our kids have the resources that they need, that when their lives are taken, that there is a level of accountability that people cannot escape, and that we continue to shine a light on what is happening in our state. God bless you all. And I want to add to that, I sat with the board president, he has committed to putting resources and creating also a task for, for mental health. So him, before you came on, we had a whole conversation about our mental health advocacy, and he committed to be part of that, champion that for the district, and Brooklyn as a whole. Thank you. At this time, we'll call up Committee Board 9 Chair, Mr. Fred. Committee Board 9 Chair, Mr. Fred Baptist. Please welcome at this time.
just a reminder, make sure you, before you leave, you got that purple card that you came in. Please make sure you scan that as you are exiting. So please make sure you grab that. Uh, please also know there's a directory so you can follow up with all the organizations that were here today. Grab one of those, as well as information on our task force is also available for you as you are exiting. I'll turn it over to Justin. I'm not going to be long, but I just want to make sure, as we're in here this room, I know a lot of times like, we know we may we know about mental health, but we're doing that work. But are you getting yourself um, some resources? Are you making sure that you're good? Make sure you go around the groups that's here. You have two people, if, it, if it's one person, go to another table, find out what that resource is. Everything is not a one size fit for everybody. Some people need other resources. So we're gonna quickly mention who's here. Black Wellness Affair, their services is mental health and advocacy. We got, we heard from Brooklyn Community Board 9. They have a lot of advocacy and civic engagement there. Drum, we talked about Drum, developing our Righteous United Movement. Brownsville Think Tank Matters. They have from Jobs, um, Global Trauma Unit, and different information for support and anti-violence initiatives. And we're going to ask you about coming down. Quiet down just a little bit, please. So I can just finish. All right, so the complaint review board, if there's misconduct by a police officer, please go over to see them. CCIT, uh, we talked about them. Disability Rights of New York, Criminal Justice Advocacy Legal. East Flatbush Community Partnership, Community Outreach, East Flatbush Village Inc., Food Pantry, Anti-Violence Initiative and Workshops, Fountain of Life Coaching Services, Nutrition, Fast and Juicing, Jet Mobile, you have UCES, Goals and Topic, Credit Information, Good Shepherd Services, Government Community Relations, Advocacy Support, Interagency Alliance, and the Black Knight LLC Shop Affair right here. Please come over. We have mental health um, wellness and chess at the same time. Kemba, as we memorialize Tanya Odoms, Justice for You, this peer coalition to our left. Um, Kings Against Violence Initiative and National Alliance of Mental Illness New York City Metro and also the Queens Chapter New York Community Action Project New York um, Department New York City Department of Social Justice Social Services New York um, City Department of Health and we talk about NYLPI and we also have North Knot Therapy uh, mental health therapy, black mental uh, health therapists are uh, there, and also New York Association of Psychiatry, Psychiatry and New York Health Service, New York State, of course, um, Department of Health, and New York State Office of Mental Health, New York Legal Assistant Group over there, One Brooklyn Health Black Squad, which has clergy, but also anti violence which is done for violence, Sacred Women Collective, Sacred Women Collective Divine Healing Work, Sacred Women Collective 360, and Safe Horizon is in the house, the Legal Center of Behavioral Health and Wellness, the New York City Justice Peer Initiative, and Vocal NY. And we're going to be, yes, all that right there. Also, we could not do this any better than as we talk about those who's here doing advocacy, we have young people in the room doing advocacy. So I want to give it up. So on behalf of New York State, I have a citation acknowledging a young advocate who advocates to reduce gun violence that we know that has trauma associated with it. Been on the streets, came to me years ago and say, before I was elected, and say, I want to do this work, I've been staunch at it with his mom and his family support. We have a mere base, prints with two A's, that's A A N I R, youth advocate, my voice, junior youth advocate, small voices make the sh the biggest difference. Please have it come here on behalf of New York City Assembly Member Monique Chandler Waterman.
I was grateful that I gave me the opportunity to meet a 70 member in Chandler Board man, who at the time was just Miss Monique to me. Miss um, Monique was the first person to give me the opportunity to make my voice heard about what was going on and pretty much how I was being affected by it. And she also has been supportive of everything I tried to do since, including working with Miss Mercedes Mercedes. But years so much and thank you for all that you do. Mom, you gotta take a picture too. Can you take a picture of us real quick? I love it. We have to support our young people and it starts to young. So when you do that little push, it goes a long way. This is our future. He's gonna take care of all of us. Thank you for joining us for Daniel's Day, our second year, 2020. 